this video, I'll talk about variables and functions in Mathematica, and how Mathematica uses subtle color cues to help us understand what it is we're doing. So if we want to use variables in Mathematica, we can define them in a very simple way. So for example, if I want the letter A to stand for the number 10, I simply type A equals 10, press Shift Enter, and now Mathematica will know that any time it sees the letter A, it should replace that value with 10. So for example, I can now type A plus 5, and Mathematica will tell me that since A is 10, A plus 5 works out to be 15. I can type A squared, and again, since A is 10, A squared will be 100. I can also type the letter B, for example, B could be 7, and now B is defined to be the value of 7. And so now I can type in expressions with multiple variables, like 2A plus 3B, which works out to be 4 to 1. I can also multiply these variables together. I can type A times B, and since A is 10 and B is 7, A times B works out to be 70. I want to be careful, however, if I type AB, Mathematica actually will not evaluate AB to be A times B. And there's a couple of reasons why this happens. So Mathematica is actually a computer programming language, and in computer programming languages, variable names can be multiple letters. We don't allow this in a mathematical context. Uh, every variable is a single letter, but in a computer language, you are allowed to have variable names that are multiple letters long. So Mathematica views AB as being a totally separate thing from A and B by themselves. The way that we would know that we messed that up is that if you notice here, AB is actually colored in blue. So the value of uh, the letter A and the letter B are in black here, but AB together is in blue. And so the way that we would fix this is simply by typing A and then a space and then B. So now Mathematica knows that A and B are supposed to be two separate things, not one thing altogether. And now it's going to multiply A times B. So that blue coloring is Mathematica's way of telling you that that expression that you've typed in is not defined. And this can help us in a lot of different ways. So for example, if I was going to evaluate the sine of pi, and I forgot the rules for syntax in Mathematica, namely that I need capital letters, so notice that sin is in blue, and also the pi is, is in blue. If I replace the lowercase s with a capital S, suddenly the sign turns black, and black is Mathematica's color of telling you that it knows what that is. Similarly, if I change the lowercase p to a capital P, it turns from blue to black. Notice also that those parentheses are in red, and again, Mathematica is trying to communicate to us. It's telling you, hey, watch out, danger, something's wrong here, because Mathematica knows that it needs to have square brackets there in order to evaluate the sine of pi, which is zero. So look for the coloring in the things that you're typing in. So if you're getting output that doesn't match what you're expecting, it may be because you're not following the rules for syntax. Uh, something else that we can do, so we defined the letter A to be 10, but maybe we want to use A to be something else, or maybe we want A to be now undefined again. We can use the command clear, and so now if I clear A, notice that the A turned from black to blue, and if I type the letter A again, now I just get A back because Mathematica no longer knows what the value of A is. We have to be careful with this as well, though, because if you look back up to this line, when we typed A times B, at the time, a was 10 and B was 7, and so the output was 70. Clearing A later does not go back and change the things that we did before. So again, you have to be careful if you're creating a document and jumping around back and forth. Uh, things may not change as you expect them to based on things that you do later. So we have to be careful that we're not, um, that, that we're being careful about what the values are that, that we're using. One more thing that I want to tell you about, and that is how to define a function. So the, the syntax for defining a function in Mathematica is very particular, and if you mess it up, it, it doesn't quite work the way that you want it to. So if I wanted to find the function f, so that f of x is x squared, say, then what I'd have to do is type f square brackets x underscore, so that's shift minus sign, it's next to the zero, close my square brackets, colon equals, and when I've typed all that stuff, the x will turn green. That's how you know that you did it right. Again, Mathematica is using color here to help us out. So the x turned green, and now I'm going to type x squared. So if I hit shift enter, now the f turns black because I've defined what that letter f stands for now. And now f works just like any built-in function. So f of 10, using the square brackets just like I would with a built-in function, gives me 10 squared, which is 100. So in the next video, I'll give you a shortcut for typing in those function definitions, but whenever we want to define a function, which is something we'll want to do fairly often, uh, that's the syntax that we use. So the name of the function, 
with square brackets, the variable name followed by an underscore, colon equals, and then the rule for the function. So practice that a few times on your own and you'll get it.